In this tutorial, we'll be covering triggers and how triggers, when paired with actions, can be used to create interactions within your augmented reality scene. We'll start by opening the triggerstart.real file supplied with this tutorial. I have it open here, and as you can see, we have three assets in the scene. We have a blue ring, a green ring, and the star of the show, a turtle that has a few animations on it. Now there are four types of triggers we can use in our scenes. We have a start trigger. This will trigger an action at the start of the experience. We have a tap trigger. This will trigger an action upon the viewer tapping an object in the scene. We have proximity enter triggers, which will trigger an action upon entering a defined distance set on an object within the scene. And we have a proximity exit trigger. This will trigger an action upon exiting a defined distance set on an object within the scene. Now let's begin. Select the blue trigger button here in Behavior Builder and select the Start Trigger. Now we need to assign an action to the Start Trigger. So when the scene starts, it plays an animation. Come over here and press the plus action button and select Play Animation Action. Now, notice we have a little warning here. Don't worry, it's totally okay. It just means we did not have an asset selected when we added the action. We can easily fix this by coming over here to Subject and selecting Turtle underscore GLB from the dropdown. Now we want the turtle to play its idle animation. So in the animation set dropdown, select turtle idle FBX. Now this is a looping animation of the turtle swimming. If you like, you can actually view it by pressing the play button. Looks good. Now we also want this animation to play indefinitely. So scroll down here and check the infinite box. So basically, as soon as this scene starts, the turtle will play that looping animation over and over and over again. Now we want to add another action to this start trigger to show our green rings. So come over here to the plus icon under turtle and press it. Select show action from the dropdown and then change the subject to ring green. Change the duration to one second and set the effect to fade and scale. This tells the ring to fade in from zero opacity to 100% opacity, as well as scale up to the full size at the start of the scene. Before we can see what this looks like in preview, we need to come up here to our scene graph and hide the blue ring by clicking the eye icon so it's not in the way, and then hide the green ring because we are showing it here with the start trigger in the show action. Now come over here to preview mode and let's see what this looks like. There it is. The ring scales up and fades in while our turtle friend is swimming nicely in the air. It's all looking pretty good. Let's go back to the edit mode by clicking edit and we will be adding a tap trigger to our turtle. This time, make sure you select the turtle first so we do not get that little warning, and then come down here and select Tap Trigger. Now, you'll notice we have a new option here on the right of Behavior Builder called Allow Retriggering. This option tells Arrow how you want to allow retriggering on this trigger. You have options to wait until after the action is complete, meaning you cannot fire off the trigger again until the whole action block plays out. You can fire it off immediately, meaning you'll interrupt the action and restart immediately upon the trigger, in this case, the tap trigger, or you can select never. And this means the trigger will only happen once and then it's over, no more clicking on the turtle. Now, we'll select after the action is complete, which is the most common re-triggering option you'll use. So on tap, we want to play an animation. So we'll select the play animation action. Come over here to the animation set dropdown and select turtle flip FBX. We want the turtle to flip when the viewer taps on it. We can see how this would all play out again by coming up here to the preview mode. The ring scales up nicely, and if we tap the turtle, he plays his flip animation. Pretty cool. Let's come back into edit mode and add a proximity enter trigger. This proximity trigger will be based off how close the viewer is to the turtle. So select the turtle, then come down here to the plus trigger icon, click it, and select proximity enter. Now the rings in the scene are about two feet in diameter which is about 60 centimeters. And the turtle is right in the middle, meaning there's a one foot distance between it and the edge of the ring. Now this is the same distance we wanna set the proximity distance to. So we can use these rings to visualize the proximity in the real world for this tutorial. So come over here and type 30, which is about one foot. Make sure the allow retriggering is set to after action is complete. Now let's add an action to this proximity enter trigger by pressing the plus action icon and selecting hide. 
We want to hide the green ring so we can show the blue ring when the viewer is within one foot proximity of the turtle. So come over here and set the subject to ring green. We will leave the duration as is, but change the effect to fade and the easing set to ease in. Now we also need to show the blue ring. So come down here and press the plus icon under ring green to add a new action to this trigger. Then select the show action. Come over here to the subject and assign that action to the ring blue asset. So what's gonna happen with this trigger is that when the viewer enters a one foot proximity to the turtle, the green ring will quickly fade out and the blue ring will quickly fade in. Now we need to create our last trigger, the proximity exit trigger. We'll use this trigger to do the exact opposite of what we set up with the proximity enter trigger. When we exit the proximity, we want the blue ring to fade out and the green ring to fade in. So let's do it. Select the plus trigger icon and select the proximity exit trigger. Set the subject to turtle underscore GLB since that turtle is the star of the experience. Set the distance to 30 centimeters again, roughly one foot, and then come back over here and add an action. Select the hide action. Set the subject to ring blue, leave the duration as is, and set the effect to fade. Now let's add our show action for the green ring by coming back to the plus action button and selecting show action. Set your subject to ring green and make sure the effect is set to fade. Okay, let's check this out in preview mode. There's our start trigger firing off when the green ring appears and the turtle swimming in an infinite loop. Let's see that tap trigger by tapping on the turtle and watching it spin. There it goes. Now it's pushed into the proximity trigger which is roughly the outline of the ring. And there it turns blue. Now let's back up and trigger our proximity exit trigger and see if the ring turns back to green. Cool stuff. And that is a quick overview of the arrow triggers.